This lecture has demonstrated that the Jesus image was fashioned from legends of heroes and from myths of dying and rising gods that reach back to the earliest myths of mankind. The image of his mother as well, Mary, was forged from pre-Christian goddess worship. The pagan roots of Christianity have been thoroughly researched by respectable scholars. Those writers who deny the factual evidence are either mistaken or disingenuous. The early church prevailed over and conquered pagan religions for a variety of reasons, many of which have been enumerated in the early Christian church and its war on reason at atheistscholar.org. But an important element in its success was to borrow, both borrow from the mystery religions and at the same time, unlike the other cults, insist on Christian exclusivity. The Christian faithful were enjoined to leave all the other false faiths and worship only Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit of the New Testament. We owe debt of thanks to scholars such as Marina Warner, Earl Doherty, Robert Price, Richard Carrier, and others who have exposed the church's pagan roots and brought the evidence to light for all who value truth to embrace. It is a matter for celebration as well as, as, as archaeological research and scientific inquiry advance, the mist from the dark past of human sacrifice and suffering are being rapidly dispelled. We may now celebrate the human capacity to grow and human minds to explore. We are beginning to realize that our crowning achievements have depended on us alone by our own efforts and not on the benevolence of a God whose story is mired in the savagery of the earliest days of our civilization. The day is coming when we shall have eradicated all vestiges of the superstitious past as we have discarded the plow for the tractor, the horse-drawn carriage for the automobile, and the airplane. We are beginning to replace the story of Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary with visions of new horizons. The influence of the ancient gods is being slowly overthrown as our confidence in man's future and ability forge new customs and ideas without reference to useless fictions grows and flourishes. Thank you for your attention. Appreciate Looking it. forward to our discussion. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, you talked a little bit about it, but why are they called mystery cults? I mean, what's the... You know, they weren't that. really called mystery cults at that time. I think that they took on that appellation when scholars were trying to figure them out. So they called them, oh, because they were mysterious? But they, they, had, they had these mysteries that were at the center of the cult. You know, like you had the mystery of the Eucharist. Oh. Remember all those, those expressions that, okay. <laughs> that still go on in the churches? And they would have this, you know, we don't know exactly what they are. Like there was the, the mystery of... Um, uh, Demeter and uh, her daughter, oh, I can't remember her name now, she had been, she had been um, raped and attacked by Hades and then she got her back for oh, a half uh, a Persephone, year. Persephone. Persephone, that's it, yeah, she's well known, yeah. And there was a mystery cult of them, and I guess the culmination, they would hold up an ear of corn, nobody knows exactly what was going on, it was to symbolize, I guess, this resurrection. And later they added Dionysius to the whole thing. But the, the initiates were not supposed to reveal what happened during, and they really kept it. Why? Because it was a mystery, I guess, and you but couldn't, you we couldn't. We have that today in certain uh, groups. Yeah. You know, that you're not supposed to tell, you know, the Scientologists or the... The Masonics. The Masonics. The Masons for a long time. Yeah, right? yeah. And they've always been wrapped up in this mystery of you know, what they do, what they stand for, what they secure. Securians? Yeah, I think. From uh, California, actually. Can you attend the Mormon services if you're not, you know, an initiate? You, you can't go into the temples. You can go That's into the thought. churches. They, it's the same concept. Okay. okay. The same okay. Concept. Yeah. Um, I think it makes so, it more exclusive. But but that also gives people, the, the Christian theologians, an out and say, well, we really don't know what they stood for. Yeah. You're just filling in the blanks when yeah. you compare it to Christianity. Yeah. But you see, we do know a lot. So they claim that that's fabricated. That but they fabricated... People with agendas who want to show that Christianity was similar are filling in more than what they should be. But they history. fabricated their early years, too. Their first probably well, 100 I, or 200 years. Enormously. Yeah, I'm the more I'm the studying, modern, the more I realize how much they did fabricate. I knew they had. The modern scholars, that's what they would say, is that the scholarship is so poor on the part of the people who want to do these comparisons. 
I don't know what the truth is. The scholarship is very poor on the part of the, the Catholic and, and the Christian theologians that want to talk about the early history of the church. The more I've been studying, the more I realize how much they fabricated and fabricated and fabricated. It's quite remarkable. I'm, I'm reading right now because I'm reading about the phony persecution of the Christians, and I'm realizing that it, almost everything was a fabrication. But is there any By the evidence? time that they hit the mi Middle Ages, they were saying, like, this is how it's always been since the beginning of yeah. the church. Yeah. It wasn't true. Yeah. yeah. But is there any evidence that, in fact, that there was something from Christianity that was taken and put into the pagan rituals? I, You know, I just doubt that completely. Those rituals are very old, and they had drifted to Rome. I cannot possibly imagine. I mean, there's possibly something, but I don't think so. so That's then, what Jonathan Z. Smith wants to. But if the mystery religions were so persistent and so uh, widespread, why didn't they survive instead of Christianity? Well, because they didn't have the same talented propagandist. Exactly, You're and they on. the Christians came up with better miracles. Um, the the other gods were kind of like not real people, and it was like centered around a supposedly real person, Jesus, which we don't think. Well, plus at that time they were basing it on that Jesus was, I mean, the whole Hebrew had a, had a history yeah. too, so they had that history yeah. to tie into too yeah. at the time. There was that split. cult too, yeah, yeah the, the, the Hebrew Jesus cult. And that was pretty strong. It, yeah, it was. I mean, but, these are all like little tiny mystery cults all over Heckenbach, right. but the Hebrew one with the diaspora, that was yeah. a much stronger base. Yeah, but actually Isis was very, her cult was very strong. Was yeah, and so was Sibley's, and of course Mithras was very I'm strong. I'm going to look up that Sibley's one. How did you yeah. spell that? C-Y-B-E-L-E, -E. and it's sometimes, you know, she has different names and appellations, something like the Virgin. But there was, a, there was another reason, too, and remember that about... 313, I can't remember exactly, the, the Treaty of Nod or whatever, the Edict of Nod, um, Constantine said that, you know, you couldn't persecute people for their religion, and the Christians had just been mildly persecuted just before that by Diocletian and some other emperors, and um, he elevated that religion, and so it became very big. I mean, he exempted them from you know, taxes, the priests from taxes and doing, you know, civic duties and what have you. But gradually and gradually it became like um, really, you know, like um, financially mm -hmm. and socially uh, very... And they began to acquire real estate at that time. Yeah, real estate, a lot of power. They had already, actually, I'm finding out, that they weren't persecuted anywhere near as much as, as they were said, and they had already been acquiring land and you know, churches and what have you. So it, it, it's, a, it's another lie. But I, I think that a lot of it was due to Constantine. And he wanted to, like, um, unite the empire under one, you know, religion. And that was a, kind of a new one. And his mother was a Christian. So, but they say that, you know, he didn't realize how quarrelsome they were. Yeah. And then they, they drove him half nuts, you know, and he always had to settle their quarrels. Because he really didn't... He claimed he was a Christian, but he really worshipped the sun god, and he really didn't know that much about the Christians and how vitriolic they were. So that's one of the reasons. You didn't mention much about the sun gods, like from Egypt. You didn't mention that at all. Well, I kind of but did with Horus and, Os and Osiris and what have you, although there was a super sun god, yeah. Was that Egyptian? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so the, the, the idea of the returning sun each year was... The sun in the sky. Is well, it was it was actually it was like the Nile Valley and the overflowing of the the, the mm -hmm. Nile and the way the crops were fertilized and the way they grew. That was the big deal with Osiris and um, Isis. That was a very important myth. But is there any truth that this popular uh, claim is that the sun they were talking to was the sun about was the sun in the sky? Not the son of God, but yeah, the son. Constantine. Constantine, particularly, um, you know, he worshipped, <laughs> he worshipped the, you know, the Greek sun god or the ancient sun god, whatever you want to think it. And so there's like a mix-up a lot of times, you know, when you see his coins and things. 
Is that what and some of the statues. Yeah, yeah. He was, <laughs> you know, but that was good enough for him. Jesus, the sun god, everybody's fine, you know. The god who, who wasn't there, whatever that documentary was. Oh, yeah, I Talks remember that doc, that yeah. There was misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, there was a misunderstanding. But, you know, people were willing to accept either one. And, but Constantine definitely was part of, he still kept the old pagan ways in many ways. When, when he, I think when I read the lecture about, um, you know, the war of the church, the Christian church on, on reason, um, when, when he built Constantinople, he, he went around it with, a, with a, some kind of a spear and stuff, the way the ancient Greeks used to, you know, like found a city. And, you know, when he brought this, he brought a lot of statues from the ancient world and he put them along with Christian statues and what have you, and, and they were like a pagan gods and goddesses. So there was a lot of, like, cross-fertilization there. You, you know, they didn't just eliminate the pagans overnight. They couldn't have. I was say it was cultural. Yeah, and most yeah. of the army was Whether pagan. they were worshipping at that point or not, it was so ingrained in exactly. culture. Exactly. Yeah, and they were still worshiping too. I mean, you know, there were a lot of people that had gone to the mystery religions because they were tired of the old religion. But the Roman pantheon, they expanded it so that they had these lesser deities that were coming from other areas too. So at some point, it became very strange. You know, you had these Roman deities that had been taken from Greek deities, and then you had all these lesser deities that they were trying to incorporate. Yeah. From yeah. the contrasts. Yeah, yeah, and Cultures they had people that were drifting in too, you know, mm -hmm. from the Hellenistic, you know, you know, areas and things. Yeah, very, very strange. It was almost like a competitive marketplace where the different competitors are trying to copy from each other to gain. An exactly. Advantage. Come to our, come to our church, mm -hmm. and, and uh, we're we have, we're kind of in the same situation right now, where we have this very cosmopolitan world going yeah. back and forth and people traveling and a loss of identity and, and it's interesting. Will we end up with an indifference to religion or are we going to end up with a new one? <laughs> Please. You wonder, don't you? I mean, I wonder sometimes. You didn't mention Bart Ehrman at all either. Who's this? Bart Ehrman? Yeah, yeah well, you know what? I because I I did that deliberately because I haven't read his his book yet, and Richard Carrier and others have disputed him very strongly, and so I'm going to do both in, yeah. in a lecture next year. <laughs> I've got to read I've got to read Ehrman, and then I've got to read um, Carrier because I just yeah. ordered Carrier; it hasn't even arrived yet. Yeah, but basically he says that Carrier is going to kill Ehrman. Yeah, I did actually. Um, yeah, Carrier is going to kill Ehrman. It's Jesus a myth, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Ehrman, you know, has a, he's invested but, in that. He wrote a book around the time of the millennium where, you know, he's, he not only did he say that like, Jesus is real, but he said that he was also like this revolutionary figure, which, I, you know, I just find, yeah, I find hard to The accept. trouble with that kind of reasoning is that there's nothing in the literature from that time, the historical literature, to back that up. And the Romans were very good at keeping records. Yeah, remember, Romans were great record keepers. But Aaron says that if you don't have a PhD in biblical studies. But you know, Richard Carrier has a PhD, and, and yeah. so does Price. So there's one, he says, yes. He, he he's says putting he down, he's putting down Earl Dory. And everybody and stuff. else, he, he just Dory is this. extremely good. And he says that this is an old story that just keeps getting recycled over and every century, over and over. It's because it's got a lot of validity. That's why it keeps getting recycled. They want to knock that out. The, the mystery cults and the dying and rising gods. It, 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 the, the, the drive is to make sure everybody understands that from the time of the resurrection, every, nothing has changed. That's the way the church always was. Yeah. These people are invested in Jesus being real. And I mean, I don't know. I think perhaps he may have been like a very unimportant figure. And it you know, matter like a point. magician, but like I've said that a million times, yeah. like it doesn't matter because there's so much, you know, myth and legend and everything that's accrued to whatever this figure is like is some scarecrow where they've hung everything on. It doesn't matter whether he was real or he wasn't. And why are we still but arguing about this? Isn't the term legend more accurate than myth? No, actually, I think it's more of a, I think he's more of a myth. Why do you say that? Well, well <laughs> you, you said myth was. Well, you tie, was, when you tie to it all the, the um, 
religious aspects of him. He goes well, from just being some dude that, you know, did cool things like I've Hercules okay. to Alleged. some guy that could that was attached to God. Yeah. So mythic has to be of God of yeah, I think he's nature. more myth than, than legend, but there legend. are a lot of legends in it. Well, and he could be a legend of around which they built the myth. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a legendary figure. Right. That they okay. started to imbue. Yeah. I mean, that's you're right though. Why why do we keep talking? Because all of those things are possible. Atheists argue all the time about you know if he was real or not. I just don't see it. why argue. Who yeah, cares? I know. And I'm with you. Who cares? Years ago though, you know, I used matters. to do it too. I have to. I have to you know, confess you know, everything about him that I was so yeah. silly. Yeah. I mean, that's right. why I say it doesn't matter. I mean, because sure, if there was some dude, even Jesus, if there, who cares? Everything they, the they've depicted about yeah. him is not yeah. real. Yeah, it's yeah. all a lie. That's it's all a made up thing. That's or, yeah, that, that's the whole point. But I, I, I'm guilty of it. I used to argue about right. it too. It's like it was so damn important. But you it use Noah. It is a flood story as an example. Oh but there my may God. have been floods and big floods. <laughs> yeah. But there wasn't. The worldwide flood. No, I no, mean, and that's been. But distinct. the areas, so different areas easy. of the world, had floods Flutter. at different times. Yeah. Yes. yes, but not one worldwide. But they flood. still the, the geology does still not bear that story. out. It just does not. Yeah, yeah. there wasn't a big giant turtle either. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whatever religion that was. Yeah, well, it's you're a heretic for that religion, then you know. But listen, I did it. I did a Noah story. I, I finally couldn't resist it, and and so I've done I've done a Noah lecture. And I and I've you know quoted some of the contemporary geologists, and Jim's finding that now when he's doing intelligent oh, yes. design. Mm -hmm. yeah. Skeptic magazines run a couple good ones on Noah and combining it with yeah, the it's design. it's a screen. But you know, uh, we went to the the play. Um, Inherit the wind. In yeah, Inherit the wind. And the, the director, I think you'll have to cut this, Jim, okay. the director of the play, yeah. <laughs> she, she had in the program that she thought that the Noah thing was true because, uh, you know, it's in all it's the everywhere. legends and, and folklore of all the people oh, all over. Oh, that true? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, mm -hmm. in that so, case, yeah. then we have witchcraft I, we and were we have shocked. magic and we have, and well, come mm -hmm. on. I, I couldn't believe it when we read it. Norm pointed it out wow. to us and I said, what? I said, oops. Yeah, I hadn't really looked at the program that well yeah. and here she's like, I guess what's her disclaimer? Yeah. Yeah. Just like the of any, any country with a major river and the river basin, and those stories are all over the place. The Has same story, the, the same story. Yeah, I've seen the movie. Did you see the movie? Oh, that yeah. It just came out? Yeah. Oh, so, no, not the movie, it just came out. The Noah movie. Oh, that's what you I thought you meant Inherit the Wind. No. No, I haven't seen, seen it movie. yet. I'll have to rent it. it. I haven't, I've debated. Have you seen it? No, but they got criticism from the Christians. Oh, sweet then. I'll because go. Yeah. It, it depicted Noah as. Drunk and having sex with his <laughs> yeah, daughter. Yeah, I'm sure. That's in the Bible. What? I was going to say, wasn't that in it's the in Bible? It's in the Bible, yeah. Well, then yeah. there you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, put it in a bad well, they said that everyone, right? I think they said, the critics said everybody would be offended by it. That Christians was later and after atheists. The yeah, so I think everybody was. Well, why are we offended by it? Isn't it a fiction? <laughs> fictional movie? I don't care. I hated to see sense. Russell Crowe playing. Is that what Yeah. yeah. Wow. If, I, if I were a Christian, I, I'd be very <laughs> disappointed, or, or yeah, Christian, I'd be very disappointed with the uh, any discussion of the Eucharist that would cast doubt that uh, I, I'm not having communion with Jesus. I'm not, you know, partaking and sharing in the resurrection because uh, and then because you're telling me all these things this, this stuff existed for centuries before the Catholic Church picked it up and yeah. incorporated it and that's why they picked it up and incorporated it because it was very popular you know if someone and was delivered feels, I feel, think they just all felt yeah. that that's what those people the heroes that's what Gods did, and that's yeah. what it was all about, and it had, that's about everything it said forever. So of course that must be what you know. Yeah. The right. Christians I mean, were like really heavily though, yeah. you know, into that. I, I think probably, it, or, or else, or else it just because they really weren't that persecuted as they said. That's what I've learned. But that was one of the slanders about them that they um, that that they uh, ate flesh, and that they, people think that that's oh, yeah, the, yes. the Eucharist thing. But you know the. Uh, the Dionysius things were, they were like outlawed about 185, 186, 
CE. And I've read the stories what about was those, and I think that those were the, the worship of Dion. It was actually outlawed. Yeah, yeah, oh. in Rome. In Rome. And, you know, there's like these wild stories that people apparently that belonged to it and then left. Especially one guy, mm -hmm. and again, it was like incest, sodomy, you name it. You know, well, I was going to ask you about the whole penis cutting thing. <laughs> with all that, I mean, it sounds like either these are all what's that? One of those religions is it charismatic? What are those ones where they all yeah. speak in tongues and are free? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Is it just that every human culture has those freaks in it? It must or be, or is that know. just hyperbole? No, they were. Were they doing actually it. cut? What? There was yeah, a they were actually. Penis? Yeah, they actually. How, how do we know this? Well, because it's you know, I mean, there are records of it, and, and they were yeah, they were doing it in Rome by the second century. Yeah. Remember, Rome Romans Cutting were good record there, keepers. Well, that was you, yeah. that was different. I thought the Roman ones were deliberate, deliberately creating eunuchs. No, no, no. I mean, well, maybe they were at some point, but uh, this this was the the worship of of uh, Sibylle. And they were they were and still. And they actually can. Yeah, the Romans forbade it until the Scott, second century CE. They can demonstrate academically that they were chopping off their. Penises as far as I know, yeah, yeah, I don't think there's ever been any doubt about that. So is it just there's freaks in every world or every age or what is it? I mean, come on. I don't know. Yeah, you I mean, know, even origin. Today, there's the, uh, yeah. There's cults that we found out were castrating themselves or having really? it done in Mexico. Yeah, that they, they were having your testicles removed in Mexico. Where, when was that? This, this was a cult out of California again. Um, and they maybe they were the ones that committed suicide. Oh, yeah, they had castrated in, themselves a and lot. And they had though. expensive yeah. tennis shoes. And they were they were expecting the UFO to come? Was yeah, yeah, what was the name of that cult? They castrated themselves? They yeah, yeah, some of them had the leaders and some Jones. of the others. No, the okay. Jones. no, the Jones was in... No, no. no. Jones was in Guyana. Oh. No. This was, they were uh, yeah. UFO followers. Yeah. yeah. I think it ended. Yeah, why is this... Do you remember why they had castrated themselves? I didn't know they had. Well, I missed that a, part. Sex was a sin. I mean, it was it was that this that their bodies were just containers for their soul. That they, they, they their bodies weren't theirs. Really. Yeah, I so, can't remember the name of that. I wanted to get rid of you. Want to look at it. Oh, is, yeah. is that the one where they lived in a commune together? I actually, I don't. I mean, oh my it's not, god! I think they, they had all they had a dormitory. They get home. I think yeah, that I they think that's the one. Yeah. I can't remember, but they did. They de definitely well, thought that the UFO was going to take about. them to right. some the, um, sacred yeah, place. I, or I, after our lecture, I'll tell you more another personal story about that. Not that I. I was going to say <laughs> right, a personal story. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's a. California, so that is something that. It's a California. Story. That that actually that wasn't just hyperbole. No, that and the documented origin castrated yeah. himself. And the, uh, the Christian. You can, you can uh, see a version of that father. today. Origin in the uh, celebration in the celebration of, with the Shiites on, on certain days when they have their. Uh, well, they scorched to the, themselves. Yeah, when they, yeah, when they well, uh, that, go to yeah, the but that's te a little, certain temples, sacred temples, they cut them themselves with their swords. That's observable today. I guess when you get into that ecstatic state, you're apt to do any crazy <laughs> no, thing. No, that makes no sense to me. Well, no, I mean, no, I mean, we're no. modern people, you know, and, and we don't... Yeah, I mean, you just have to look at it from um, the anthropological, not from the disgusting this is the human condition. This is things that people do yeah. for a variety of expressions. Yeah. Um, you know what came to mind while I was listening, which at first may not have any relevance, but you know, there's this p comparison that's been made between Lincoln and Kennedy, President Lincoln and President Kennedy, in the way that they died. They they put the two together and they said, well. One was shot in a theater and, and was moved to a, uh, a library or book repository, and the other one was shot from the book repository and moved to a theater. That, that they, they tried to make historical correlations, even though they were so separated in time. How about the and other part? That's woo -woo. Pardon? That's woo-woo. I know, I know, but let me... I know you know it's woo-woo. Yeah, of course it's woo-woo. But um, the, the point is, is that any two historical events separated by time you could say, oh, I see some similarities yes. between the two. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's another reason why the Christians may say, oh, of course you're going to see some similarities, but these are obviously with Kennedy and Lincoln, these are entirely two different events and they couldn't yeah. have connections. 
they're going to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Say you're just you're seeing uh, you know castles in the sky by just uh, trying to compare the two. Now the reason Kennedy and Lincoln are actually compared is the astrologers want to say it's the same. I didn't even know positions. that. I didn't either. This is yeah. all new to me. This oh was, my yeah. God. And that there's I, some periodicity to it all. This. Uh, the, the, the president elected oh in 1980 God. was going to get killed because of every even number. You know, well, the there's that numerology. Got, it's numerological, so but it's also astrological. Yeah, it was just weird stuff. But but nevertheless, you could take any two any two events mm -hmm. and, and say, yes, these two mm -hmm. are related. Mm -hmm. So yeah. be careful about that, too, because... Well, I, I just don't think that that's the case so with this. I, I think that the dying and reviving gods, they're, they're very related. <laughs> but the crucified Messiah, where is the crucified Messiah in any of the other myths? Well, what's his There name? was crucifixion. Yeah. There, there was a crucifixion. There was actually yeah, what, was... three or four different common yeah. ways of dying in crucifixion. Yeah, mm -hmm. was one. But, was it the God, but it was the son, it was the rival son of the God. It was, it was, it was the minor Addis character. was crucified. Addis? Yeah, Addis. I, I was just reading it. I mean, he he's was, crucified. Tell me again, who was he? He, he was, was the, spa, or the partner of, of um, the Sybilis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sybil. Yeah. Uh, Heaven's so, Gate, by the way. Crucified, you know, in it front of a pine called. tree or okay. on a pine oh, yeah. tree, oh, yeah. depending right. on, on, you know, which version of the myth. You know, there's all these variants yeah. to these things. Well, and think about it. If you want to make yours unique, you have to add a twist. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's what we do to every story. Yeah, but you see, then it becomes this conspiracy theory t approach to say, oh, I don't think well, of course there's differences because that's how they wanted it to seem. Well, I mean, I don't, think it's, I don't think it's a conspiracy theory at all. I think that these things just, you know, these are part of like this human condition of what was going on at the time. Yeah. I, don't, I think that our, our brains somehow at that time gave rise to these stories. Well, let me play the Christian advocate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was, is that... Um, well, what else would the Messiah look like? I mean, if he didn't look like Jesus, what would he look like? I mean, well, we don't even know what Jesus looked like. Well, I'm not saying physically he looked like. I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, he's got long hair, but no. And, I mean, if there was a, uh, if God did send somebody to earth to be the Savior, what would that person look like? You know, that, that's what they, they would say. Oh, well, just because it happened to be similar... Does it make it wrong? It, oh, that, I see what you're saying. That 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 is what would happen if God sent His. But why would it happen? I mean, why? Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, really actually, religious. I mean, you know, see how but, silly their story. I mean, why would course, it have to happen? Of course, at all? you can't kill God. Of course, God would rise again. You can't <laughs> kill him because He's God. Well, well is Dionysius it? rose again every year. Yeah, but that. Oh, because, okay. So yes, and they would claim that yeah, that was a myth, and Jesus was not. Okay. Well, I mean, to each his own. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, the people that worship Dionysius argued, and the people yeah, that worship Sibylle and Annas would have said that, you know, ours is true, and this this guy borrowed all this stuff. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you, you got me there. I'm on your side, Mary. It's just that... No, I know, I know. Um, the, these are the kinds of justifications that they're going to go through. Well, you they're... can't argue with Christians about this. Believe me, when I was a young woman, I tried. When I was in college, that's what started me realizing yeah, you can't I'm argue with them because but... I, we were learning some of these things already in the humanities. That's why I'm so sorry they're taking these courses away, you know. Yeah. And I, I was arguing with Christians in my dormitory that were taking the same classes. We were all in that same core thing the first two years. And... They they were they felt very good about it because they thought that this like the Christian apologists in my lecture they thought it had prepared everybody you know the world was getting ready for Jesus and oh, that that they, guaranteed the authenticity of their yeah. story because very easy because thing people's to do. minds were ready to accept yeah that, because those people's things. minds were ready to very accept it and it was just more and actually I was having a talk with him uh, one day. And this is how he felt, that the, the world had been prepared mm -hmm. for the Jesus thing. And he's, he's a formidable scholar mm -hmm. in both areas, and not only in religion, but in, and, and he knows all the Greek, and he knows all the Hebrew, and he knows this and that. And so the, he has no problem with it, he told me. That, that's, a, that's a very common theme yeah. uh, through sermons, yeah. old sermons. He so wasn't forth. angry or upset or anything very like common. that. He was, he was fine with it. He was very happy, you know. And, and then he told me, and I didn't include it in the lecture because I am unable to find it, um, that if you go back into the ancient you know, documents which he's been, they, they, they call 
Jesus, um, Bacchus, and Vacus. Wow. It's like, like Dionysius, the other name for Dionysius. He found that fine. It was very appropriate. You see, this is this long chain of this mm -hmm. preparation for the Savior. Yeah. Except but I, you know, when I heard that, I said, "Oh, <laughs> so they were actually, you know, that's right. how close the relationship is. Right. No problem at all." So, mm -hmm. do I, am I going to argue with Christians about this? No way. I'm sorry. Yeah, Let somebody else work. do it. But, but the, this idea that Jesus was a myth was new to me. You know, 15 years ago, I didn't know that. I didn't know that that people were taking that that position. Oh, that approach. You know, that, mm -hmm. that, and even Frank Zindler said the same thing, that when he first heard about this idea that Jesus was a myth, and he's very well read, he thought it was fringe. He thought, well, of course there was a Jesus. Yeah. But he, yeah. you know, he'd been an atheist most of his life and, and very well read. And he takes he, the other position, know. or did before his death. Frank Zindler? Yeah. That, that Jesus was a myth. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the, yeah, the Jews never wrote about Jesus, and yeah. nobody else ever yeah. did either. Yeah. Except, you know, the... The church founders. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a surprise to me, and now we can say, well, now I can say it looks very obvious, yes, that he was a myth. Mm. It's very weird. We're, we were acculturated to think that, well, of course mm -hmm. it had to be Jesus because everybody knows that. Oh, I always yeah, thought that kind of the same as you. I just assumed there was a person and the, the stuff around him was crap, but there was yeah. a person. Was a person. I did too, guys. Not, not I did even, too. I mean, yeah. And, yeah, it was only recently that I started going, oh, wait, people think it's the whole thing is a myth. Like, yeah, it didn't even exist. Yeah. That was new to me too. Yeah, it's interesting. In the last... The persecution kind of, kind of, uh, of the Christians gets was, to you. was mainly a myth. It's not that mm -hmm. there were none, but... Well, when you say myth, you mean mainly propaganda of Propaganda of yes. the yeah. worst kind. I'm just studying it now. It'll be, it'll be that doesn't fun. fit your myth definition. <laughs> okay, sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. Propaganda, legend. <laughs> well, one of the one of the many instances where uh, the wool has been pulled over our eyes. Oh boy, has yeah. it ever! Yeah. But then again, you know, where do we go from here? That we where we weren't anyway twenty years ago or before we realized that Jesus was a myth because we didn't believe it then either yeah when we thought that there was somebody named Jesus preaching in the Galilee well you know it didn't convince us then so in some ways isn't this just an, a, an academic exercise that it's not going to convince the believers no. and it's no. the atheists are That's still going to be the atheists any believers. well I'll tell you what I think is interesting about it and doesn't necessarily take us anywhere like you're saying. The historical, the, the history of it. That's why I took this class. Yeah. I mean, I, not so much because I give. I'm not going to sit there and, like you said, have any arguments with Christians about right or wrong. I know what you know. I know what I know and know what I believe. But whatever. But just the history of it. I took the class because that was his. You know, that was the focus and how it was described. It was a historical, archaeological. You know, tying it yeah. into evidence of. You know, that kind of stuff. And I thought, well, now this history I love. I love yeah. history. Yeah, history is interesting. And so this is interesting just because the historical um, aspect of it. Yeah, many, I think, it, are you finding out that there are many instances of uh, coming up short uh, archaeologically on all the things that don't match up with what's... Oh, of course. I mean, of course, yeah. of course there is. And they'll just tell you that... It just hasn't been found yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Nothing's been found yet. That's a pretty big wall yeah. not to find. So I, 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 had not, I had not encountered it till later after I had written this lecture, but there were at least two regions where um, Dionysius was worshipped, and um, the, the priests would, like, get witnesses and stuff, so everybody would see... And there was no way except the, the entrance that they sealed. No way into the cave or the temple. And then they would yes. like place these jars of water. Yes. And guess what they were the next day when they opened all these seals and they Wine. had independent Wine. witnesses. Why? <laughs> you got And they it. borrowed that from uh, the, the, uh, the wedding. The right. wedding. You remember the wedding at Cana? The oh, wait a what, the what, day, what, what date was that? Oh my God, it was very early. It was was very that BC? Early. Was that BCE? Oh. It was BCE, yeah. It was well, BCE. Then was how did they know that that <laughs> Jesus was going to do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, there were people back then that didn't believe. Just so there were plenty of yes. philosophers. I mean, there was you know yes. not everybody was crazy, ecstatic yeah. weirdos cutting off their weenies. No, no. So I just did you ever have you ever asked yourself 
Who would you be back in antiquity? Would you be would one of those? Be something? One of those crazy cults, or would you? That's be one an of those interesting. People? I've thought that myself. Yeah. I've thought that many times because you know I think sometimes we just are who we are. We're just born to be skeptical. Or, yeah, they or just not that, yeah. driven to be, I mean, I'm just not that emotive. Yeah. I'm certainly never going to be flagellating myself and all that <laughs> other stuff. I mean, I don't even get that. My mind can't wrap my head around. I know, it's Ooh. so crazy. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. flagellant, flagellant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, your mind, I can't no, think to myself, gosh, if I was back then with all that superstition surrounding me, of course I don't have the benefit of today, but... There were plenty of people back then that didn't yeah. buy into that crap either. Yeah. And there was plenty that did. You got, I just wonder. Well, there's sure. a scholar, Vane, V-E-Y-N-E, -E, and he wrote an interesting book that never really comes to much of a conclusion, but did the Greeks believe in their religion? Right. And you know, and really what he ended up saying was yes and no. I mean, when some the priests did, were making did. these sacrifices, uh, you know, for victory and stuff, they, they believed it, yeah, it was good for the country. Did they always believe it? No. You know? well, and that's sure. just exactly they, what it's Did they like get now. paid for it? And did they hold yeah. positions of power because yeah. of it? Yes. Did they yeah. make it worth pretending to believe? It was an interesting book, you know. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And I think that's probably what's what it's like right now. I mean, I just noticed that the Pope excommunicated the mafia, but uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, but you know it's what? A it's a whole. whole I found out that it's a whole procedure, and you can't just excommunicate. It's individual. It has to be an individual. It has to be an individual. So, and that Pope, uh, that was symbolic. Pope Paul be. something or Pope John Paul had done it, like I forget when already. But this time he did it from Calabria, which is a center. Of uh, oh, yeah. mafia, so you know, just it just it just before Across you get to Sicily. you just before you get to Sicily, yeah. So now they're worried about the Pope's security, but um, some experts are saying that you know uh, the mafia, and they're right, is they're invested in the church. Not only do they give the church money, but they like marching in the processions and they go to church and they have their children baptized. Remember, like a Godfather. Mm -hmm. You know, and stuff. So, you know, they don't think it's going to come to anything. I think, again, propaganda. Symbolism. So did he believe what he was doing? Yeah, I don't know. So we as atheists, do you think we should make more effort to publicize that Jesus was a myth? That, that we should mention that? I don't know if that? it would do any good. Well, I'm back with what you said, though. I don't know if I care. I, yeah. I'm more inclined to well, just like when people say, "Do you believe in God?" or "What do you know, God?" and all that stuff. I say, well, "I don't even care." Well, of course you do. Yeah. Not well. No, I don't care if God is real or not because it doesn't affect my personal life. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. If it's more effective to have the information available, readily available, online, literature, mm -hmm. uh, well, it's occasional it's television appearance, thinking, occasional billboard. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's there for people who are leaning in the direction of, of not unbelief, yeah. being happy with what they're believing. But I'm back to does it matter if he was a, if those people probably are already on our side, which say, well, you know, he may have been a person, he may not have been, but regardless, he was, all the stuff surrounding him was fake. So I, I, I'm still back to why well, does it matter Well, I think so some much? people are... A, Confused. I mean, you some know, people are on the verge of abandoning that way of you thinking. Think that would make a difference. Yeah, and I, I think, think that, that having the, inf the information out there is the important. Real Christians, or, or just about giving the them this fact. <gasps> the real Christians. Oh, God. The, there is no credible outside writings. No, I mean, you, Josephus mentions it, but it's it looks credible. like it's it's, it's um it, it's forgery. It's forgery. At least, yeah. even in Bar Bart Ehrman's case, admits that at least part of yeah. it. Is forged, changed, and Tacitus. And a paragraph. <laughs> Tacitus mentions that, but when is that? One fifty C.E. Two hundred C.E. I earliest. can't remember. Yeah, so, and he was obviously told about it. So if you just say somebody, he said they worship Christos. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Who's casually Christian to say? Did you know that there are no independent histories of Jesus from the first century? There's no writings. Nobody uh, of that century wrote down anything that they heard about this guy or saw this guy there's nothing but then they'll say it's in the bible and the bible has like been inspired, inspired by, by god. god 
And there we God are put again. that into him. He didn't need to do it then. He can yeah. do it whenever he wants because he's yeah. God. He yeah. could do it 10 years And besides, now. they probably covered it all up. The Romans probably never right. they, yeah, they, they purged just all their purged records. Purged everything. So did the Jews because they didn't like the, yeah. the, I mean, the Jewish can't. Christians. Why not? It's, I mean, just, it, it's just, to me, that was a big surprise. I really just assumed that other people would have been writing about this, just as they wrote the histories of the Roman Empire, they would have been right, right? Well, actually, you're oh, probably right, because even my son, who's an atheist, remember, he was asking you, because he didn't believe me when he read my, my thing, an atheist scholar, so he's asking Norm, you know, and then he believed it when Norm tells him. Who, who did the writing back then? The, the people who did the writing were the elites. Who did Jesus yeah. associate it with? It was not the elite. No. Right. It was a slave. So, I mean, if, if you believe he was some sort of a person, he wasn't, he was associating with the common folk. Yeah. He didn't, so that, yeah. that might explain that, some that, of the fact. Yeah. That, I mean, I'm, I'm now, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's, yeah. You, get, you end up, and like, if we're being fair, you have to thing. be able to admit that there are holes, and, and both theories, there's yeah. holes. And, there's and, holes and in both theories. That's why I'm back, so I don't care because you can't Yeah, except that we know that. Whenever there was anything like major scandal or uh, a significant event taking place, there's documentation from that period. Yeah, but that was well, nothing significant document. happened. But they you know what? There were you know there were like hundreds, thousands of people that under Pontius Pilate that's what I'm saying. Nothing and, and, significant and, happened. Yeah. yeah. Until someone later on and decided I think that to make they didn't right. consider these crucifixions right. of people, you know. As a matter of fact, that in fact, isn't know, that the only place there is a record? Isn't there a re is the crucifixion that, that's record? That's it. That's it. I that's thought that all was the only we knew. place. Yeah, the Romans the were good, but I don't think that they. I don't think that they kept records of everybody in. in Probably well, the Romans. Yeah. In, in, everybody. I think the Romans had a record of the. That no. Jesus was crucified. There's no, no. there's no. Oh, I thought record. there was. No, no. no there's, there's no written no document. No, there's anything. no record. No. There's no mention. That he Joe. existed I think at all. Josephus was the first, and then Tacitus, 150. Yeah. Uh, maybe 200. I can't remember when Tacitus was right. It's really embarrassing when you look at. There's no written record. Yeah, I mean, except in the got Dean a real Bible. Problem. Yeah. And yeah. If you were well, a scholar, what are you going to do? You have You're going to go to the Gospels. That's all you have. Yeah, yeah that's what and they those do. Are fabrications from their. And then they sit and argue over this stuff in the or Gospels, the, which is yeah, the copies of the copies of the copies. Yeah, the, yeah, and there's no original the, copy you know, of the New Testament the you from study. Mm -hmm. that were written down. Yeah, we don't have any even originals of the copies. So. No, no, that's what's so horrible. So yeah. Well, I, have, I just got done reading one of Bart's books too. I can't remember which one it was. He's got so many, but he does that. You know, he he does that connecting. Okay, so here's a, we're not going to call it a source document, but it's the only source we have of what was thought. So how can we connect this yeah. um, to thematically and this way and that way to come up with something that might be, you know, somewhat true? And they so they use the but language. But they do start from yeah the Bible. They have to. They, there was one document before. It's called the Quella document. That's what the Germans I think it means oh. source. Oh, but you know what? There's yeah, no proof of that. There's though. no proof of that. There's no proof of that document. It, it well, the only there's no proof of it, but they they can even yeah. reconstruct that from the style of writing and from the linguistics. You know, yeah, they think that Mark used right. it a lot. Yeah. yeah. So they well, because it's what it's the priestly, the p, the. Q, I think you're you're getting that mixed up. No, yeah, that's the, the Old Testament. Four sources. Oh. That's the Old Testament. Oh, you're just doing New Testament. Yeah, I'm just oh, okay. doing no, New I'm Testament. Talking, you're right, I was thinking yeah. I was getting it mixed up. So I don't, you're I right. mean, I have not seen that document. I have no, uh, no proof at all no that one it existed. Seen that document. Yeah. <laughs> they think that Mark, you know, took things of it. And there were, like, and things Mark around like really that Mark. where they would, like, <laughs> right. they, they would, like, have documents where they would have, like, sayings. Yeah of whatever, sages or what have you. So that, that that's a lot of speculation. Mm -hmm. So we're basing like this fictional story yeah. on this other thing that doesn't exist that anyway would have just been some sayings of the so-called Jesus. And I don't, I, we don't have anything. We have less, I don't know. Well, you have less on that than you do of the Roman, yeah. Roman, Greek and Roman myths. Yeah, yeah. The documentation of yeah. how those evolved and yeah. stories. I mean, it's very it's awful when you think about it. Think about it. I mean, it's all based on this, this nonsense, and it really grew into this powerful. And we still have we still have the horrible effects from it politically. Oh, it'll just keep going. 
It'll keep going for a long while. On the bright side, they've replicated the um, Higgs boson. <laughs> well, you sent me an email. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they, they yeah. took it to the next It's on the, the next atheist step. scholar, by the way. You know, it's on any of the meetup. It's on the discussion of the meetup, yeah, mm -hmm. under cosmology. Yeah, in the analysis of the this data, they've taken it to the next step. They have found. Now they, they have to keep. They, now they have to test falsified. it again. They, have, they yeah. claim to have proof now. Yeah. yeah. Now they they're have, to, have to keep. Now they're going to test it again. It took them a goddamn long time. <laughs> the God particle. <laughs> Yay. A lot of money too. Uh, yeah. And more to be yeah. spent. It's worth it though. I mean, it's kind of amusing. Any other comments about the myth of Jesus? Um. What was the villa of the mysteries? Just when I asked them, yeah, just a few. Oh, that was this, this, uh, this state. It was preserved perfectly, and it was, uh, yeah, and it was, uh, it was uh, Dionysius. It was just a. a, a yeah, the, the walls were like you know, com it almost completely preserved, yeah, the and when they cleaned them up a little bit, there they were. And oddly enough, you know, I've always seen pictures, and I've always been fascinated because you know Bacchus when he was before he became like this. You know, resurrection God. I, I really liked him in his earlier manifestation. He was my God. So, <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> but um, in Ann Arbor, they they brought him around. They had done like these human reproductions. I mean, like human full size. I mean, reproductions of of the walls. Remember, Jim? Yes, and it was fantastic. They were life size. Wow. And they had they had set them up. I forget. I think some organization there had had uh, paid to have them but brought to Ann Arbor. There? They were just were they, they were direct copies of the of the walls. Oh no, I understand. Yeah. What the, was the, on the, the walls? rites oh, I'm so of Dionysius. The, the, oh, the, the actual rites. Okay, so it wasn't the story, the myths of Dionysius. Well, some, some of it sort of kind of, a, but it was more a religious thing, like somebody be like this. A how to document? Yeah, but okay, it isn't. You can't tell what's going on. Like you, need this a, is, you need an interpreter from that. And they don't, they don't know what was going on. Oh, so they don't necessarily, it's not like hieroglyphics where they broke no, in the code. A lot of the manuscripts that were in these rich people's libraries were like charred and burned. Man, what, you know, if I could go back in history, I think one of the things I've Top of my list is to not have the Alexandria Library burn. Yeah, oh, right. Because right. yeah. yeah. you got it. You know, I mean, you got to think. I bet you well, Pompeii a too. Stuff, I mean, know? not that it was anywhere near the scale no. of Alexandria, but. There, is, there, there was an Epicurean, and they haven't been able to, like, they've been trying to reproduce what was in his library. It was so charred, and they haven't wow. had much luck at all. And then, and then probably these walls of the Villa of the Mysteries, probably, because this villa, the guy was, and the family obviously was heavily into this worship, we would know more about what those pictures meant. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we don't. It's very frustrating. You know, it's very hard for me because... We always do that historically. We, you know, these are pictures, and so they they worshipped it. And these are pictures of what they worship. I'm thinking to myself, I got pictures all over my house, and that doesn't mean I worship yeah, any yeah, of them. Yeah, well, there's that too. Yeah, but those I mean, are cheap. It's cheap today to have pictures, but back then, it was so all the time. Right. So the, I guess, unless you happen to have a kid in your house that liked to draw and was really yeah. good at it. I mean, you yeah, know, crayons, I don't know. And paper. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you I know, mean, wasn't well, there is there is something time. to be said for that. I mean, you know, was everything a religious thing? That's what I'm saying. I, I think like the bill of history is really ever, was. Okay, and that it I was mean, a I urinal. I tell you, it was a <laughs> urinal. This is like everything <laughs> we seem to turn it into. All the art, the pagan. I'm yeah. thinking, you know, was it really pagan art by the time we got to Constantine, or was it just stuff that was pretty that? tied back into something where they looking at it going, I am thinking of you as a pagan art piece. Oh, no, they were probably more no. like, I know what it represents, I know, but... It's I, beautiful, yeah. The that's artists, what I'm saying. They would be heavily into He didn't gather this together to yeah. spend time worshipping all this art as the icons. Well, he it was gathered. religious too, though, see. Was it? Religious Tricky. Tricky. Well, which one? Like, like the religious which ones were just art? Pretty? Like the religious art of the Renaissance. Your, your I mean, religion. now we look at it and we say this is beautiful even if we don't believe. But they yeah. worshipped it. But at one time, it was really that you know, the a way to, the, to, you know, remember the people were unlettered and what have you. It was yeah. a way to teach that. them religion, you know. The well, religion. it was a pretty way to show it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean they worshipped that picture. Yeah. And they also had a Some whole, of them really did. But they had a whole crap ton of Greek pictures of, of showing, well, I guess they worship Greek. I don't know. Yeah. I just... It just seems like we put so much meaning into everything we find. Those figurines... Well, yeah. 
you know, yeah. those, those big breasted figurines yeah. that are in certain places. Nobody knows what they're, That's they are. Tricky. And everybody's trying to figure out. That's tricky. Stuff. Were they really, you know, were they really I, I posit the theory. Could they have been, um, you know, they could have been hospitality icons. Yeah, like the freaking pineapple. <laughs> Hey, I'm not kidding. No, I mean, people like, imbue all of this mystical but, stuff into these yeah, objects, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, just because right. they had a, But if you go knows? into a Catholic church... No, 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 I'm talking about... You're, no, excuse me. If you go into a Catholic church, and you see a statue of Mary and Joseph and Jesus and, you know, all the things, and it's in the context of the church, sure. what do you expect that to, to symbolize? What would you yeah. expect? If you're walking in there, what would, you, what would you expect would be behind that? Well, I understand that, but we are talking about art in people's homes, and that and finding it in cities that have mm -hmm. been whatever. We're talking about finding these but objects. Look at all the crap we have now. Look home. at the virgin grottoes. So look at all the virgin <laughs> things in the Cold people's cow. yards. <laughs> they believe that at least partially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand that. Some of it definitely is. So you're you're, is you're you're trying really to say? Is. Are you trying to say? Would you put that, that in if your you, yard? If you yeah. if you like, if you go into somebody's house today and you would see a uh, uh, a contemporary painting by you know well known artist Andy Warhol, uh, Andy Warhol Picasso, I worship, uh, Matisse. <laughs> so what? Uh, so you're saying that that could also be what we're seeing. In the villa in Pompeii. No, I'm saying the villa is probably what no, she said. No, I mean, you know, Reese is right in a way. I'm I mean, talking Dimitri about likes, no. Dimitri likes icons. Our son likes icons, and, mm -hmm. and he's an atheist, but he likes the art style. And he tends to Therefore, also, the yeah. people don't know when he's buying yeah. it. You know, they think it's great. He also kind of likes the ones where the saints are kind of looking at each other, like, you know, like they're, you know. I used gonna, to collect crucifixes. Yeah, yeah, they're going to yeah, have sex really. or something like that. Mm -hmm. He inevitably picks up. But and they have all that stuff hanging in, but in that's their house. It's very that's what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah. That trendy. still is religious to somebody. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking yeah. about. Oh, what right. I'm saying is that oh. you're talking, let's look at Pompeii. Pompeii is, you know, blah, blah, blah. Sure. You know, so if you go into any common person's home okay. and you start pulling out an object that survived, uh, okay. It's like every time mm -hmm. you pull an object out of a common person's home, someone is saying that this is a religious artifact I because it exists. And I'm oh, saying, I understand. what I'm I understand. saying is, yeah. mm -hmm. why do we insist mm -hmm. that every single thing? Mm -hmm. And I was using, I don't know if you're familiar with these mm -hmm. big breasted. No, I'm, I am, I am, I am. Oh, yes, yes, well, you insane. know, kind of like they think that they're copies, kind of of the. Big statues like Sibylla. They could with her be big that. Her big they stone. might be religiously, or like I said, they could. My, I'm like, how do we know they're not just freaking the symbol of hospitality? They're not like pornography. <laughs> or <laughs> what, 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 yeah. we, we, we make Porno. everything sound like it, everything in these houses were was somehow or another that's tied right. to an absolute right. religious conviction. No, I think you might be right. That's yeah. that's good. That's good. That's a good idea. I Why do we assume that? that? Because first of all, I don't think we are assuming that. I think there's there's plenty of. Uh, you know, folk life artifacts, pottery comes to mind where they understand what it was for. It was for holding well, wine. Well, it's functional, or, yeah. Or it was, it was a yeah. functional piece. Well, that they know. They those, can even tell you the exact, you know, right. like the, wine the things, stone. which which ones they were. But, they but metal was expensive. Anything that you had to make, you know, out of something that was rare was expensive. So you wouldn't just do it mm -hmm. because you wanted to have, a, have to something well. to sit on. Right. Yeah. You did it yeah. because you there was something really important about mm -hmm. that object. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But in addition, we have, I think we have to be careful not to look at everything from our secular perspective, where, where religion is so separated from public life, is that in, yeah. in many of those cultures, religion was the was life. life. Yeah. And you didn't even call it religion, right. it was your people. Yeah. Your people had a religion, yeah. but it, it wasn't your religion, mm -hmm. it was your people, and they happened to worship whatever. So. So everything that you might do, getting up in the morning and going to bed at night, might be related in some way to this religion. Mm -hmm. Rituals. This of ritual of washing your hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, all of the stuff that we would do while we're preparing a meal or what they did for religious reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, even the Romans, I mean, it was very important. Their, um, the Romans were, their, their ancestral gods were very important. Yeah. And they, yeah. they would like, you know, light a fire or would do whatever in the in the morning. I said, and yeah, you are surrounded. Yeah. It's a very good they point. Had, they like, had gods, you know, little little statuettes of gods yeah. near the fireplace, yeah. in the kitchen, near the stove. Yeah. So what you're hurt. saying yeah. is back yeah. then it was so difficult to make any of these that they made it, it probably had something to do with that religion. Mm -hmm. If it survived till today, right. yeah, it, it probably enough. was 
was yeah. was really important. Um, you know, it was in a rich person's yeah. possession. Remember, it was mainly rich people. In fact, Pompeii, the stuff we have are wealthy people. You know, there were, of course, there were tradespeople there and stuff like that. But most of the stuff, they, those were very wealthy resort areas. So if you want, if you ever go to India or Thailand, I think those are the two countries today where we could see that their spirituality yeah. is everywhere in everything they do. Yes. They couldn't say this is not they spiritual. They can't separate it. Mm -hmm. And this is everything yeah. else. Yeah, life in India is like, you know, My religious, health. spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, food's I mean, awesome. Everything. I'm just saying. The you know, eating, yeah. you know, the whole thing is, is somehow connected to their spirituality. Yeah. And yep. they don't so, think twice about it. We think about it. Yeah. So today, you know, when people say I'm a Jewish atheist, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> to, to a first century Jew that's it's it's the entirety everything about what they did you know was connected to god there mm -hmm. wasn't anything that they did that as jews this was their people god mm -hmm. the people god was and god people was one. god and people was yeah. one that's a good way to describe but they they so did bitch that, all I, the I time have... about the epicureans and being atheists and jews that were starting to like like the epicurean philosophy and yeah. they considered that atheism. We're, we're drifting away, and, and they gave up their Judaism, though, Mary, didn't they? They didn't say, well, now I'm an Epicurious Jew. I'm... You know, I'm, I'm still, like, mm -hmm. they, trying they, to figure this out. If I have... ever do, I'm going to give a really good lecture, but I, yeah. I want to make sure that I know what I'm talking about. It doesn't sound, though, like, I mean, if you go back into the biblical history, there was plenty, like you had said in your thing, there was plenty of Jews that had... Um, that were participating in the worship of those two boss. Yes, yeah. yes, very so, early. Know, they were, but they were Jews. This is BCE. And they were yeah. doing, so I mean, and, yeah, and you can Old find Testament. a ton of, in fact, I mean, you can find a ton of examples of that in the Bible because that's what they're, they're complaining about all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you're Jewish and you're the not Jewish. Yeah. I Jew, think it was so important, the, the crops and the, the, you know, the, the rising of the crops, because that's what a lot of this, this thing kind of was. It was fertility and the, and the crops and everything mm -hmm. that they, that they worshipped. Well, you, know, you can't be yeah. in the diaspora and not pick yeah. up other people's things. Exactly. And start mingling them yeah. somewhat with your own beliefs. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure you probably did have Dionistic Jews, mm -hmm. and Dionysus the, Jews. Then a cranky prophet has to come I along mean, and kick it out of here. The interesting yeah. thing is, like, yeah. how heavily were they Because that's what the prophets did all the time, <laughs> was complain about, you know, these, adopting all these weird yeah. things that weren't. I'm still researching that, Norm, with the Epicurean thing and the, you know, the Maccabees and things. And, you know, I, I, I don't feel confident yet to do a, a But the, the Maccabees were the backlash to that yeah. Hellenization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're yes. going to force you to be Jews. But you know what? There's there, I'm still not finding enough. <laughs> well, you know, they took the Maccabees is not in. What's the Mac, The Maccabees is in the Catholic Bible, yeah. Yeah. not yeah. the Jewish yeah. Bible. And I'll tell well, you why. well, you tell me why, and I'll tell is, you why. Is the Hasmoneans <laughs> weren't really uh, from the house of David. They were, they, they were very radical right. Jews. But they didn't have a lineage, and to be a priest, a high priest, you really had to have your father's father, 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 having been a priest. So the Hasmoneans were independent, and they couldn't trace their lineage. That is part of it, Okay. and I agree 100%, but, and I'm just going to tell you with this class I'm taking, what he posits, okay, and sure. he says um, that part of the, that is like one of the exceptions to this whole the hero thing I was talking about earlier that he's tying to and saying the hero in um, the Hebrew culture back then was the common guy, not the dude going off the battle. Well, that's what you were telling so me early on. The Maccabees, yeah. And that was, you know, they were trying to fight. They were pushing to fight. There were the Bin Laden. Yes, the exactly. Yeah. So they didn't want, that was not part of the, the message they were trying to send. So that was excluded out of the Bible for, for all of those reasons because that's that wasn't the political message. And it doesn't fit if you think about it. No, it that doesn't. Maccabees really. doesn't fit with any of the other story. No. Nobody's going off to battle and winning glorious things and coming back a hero in that sense. In that century. Yeah. And right. That, yeah, sure. right. Well, I'm talking about, yeah, yeah. yeah that's Joshua. Yeah, know, earlier than yeah, they had yes. Joshua yes. and all these great heroes. But obviously, that's part of the whole Bible Samson, thing is they yeah. progress as they need to send different messages yes. to, to survive. But you know, culture. actually, it's, the it's Maccabees, they, they started to become very corrupt. 
and actually started to, you know, um, you know, like sell, fix, yeah, sell uh, out basically. Yeah. 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 So that, that was, was later. very that, weird. Yeah, yeah, once they secured their power. Yeah, I know. It was interesting. See, and yeah. I would say all of those together are, because I absolutely agree with you. The great patriots, the great religious thing, and, and it didn't take very long, though, actually, for them to drift into, you know, the sellout and, yeah. and you know, do exactly what the uh, earlier guys were doing that were Maccabees. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I, I found that strange. But that yeah. whole thing is just too alien to me, and I can't really get my you know, mind yeah. around it, and I can't get enough good references. I've been looking and looking and looking to really explain this to me in some kind of, like, cohesive manner where I can actually give a lecture about the... Everybody assumes that they, that they had adopted, many Jews had adopted the Epicurean philosophy specifically. When you start looking, there's not too many. There's, like, one book or two, and I want to make sure that they're correct. Why is everybody assuming this when I can't find any, you know, yeah, like, good references? Go I can find the, a message here, a, a yeah. reference there. No, I think you're going to have to go into some of the journals, Mary, some of the, the papers, not, not books. Yeah, but, but my gosh, papers. that would probably involve, you know, travel. No, I mean, some of it's online or some of you have to pay, buy yeah. the article, but... Um, you know, they, they, the academics... I have the footnotes, I have the references, but when I get to the references, I'm coming not, up with not, not really enough. Hmm. Yeah. You've so got to piecemeal it, I think, together. And it's just not working. Could you expand on the... find some kind of a thread to, to pull together the, the, uh, the fertility, tie, with going back to our myths and, and Christianity, and how they tried to make it new, but yet they kept the same old thing. Well, it's kind of pathetic. Because you have to work, you have to grow crops. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, you have, have to work with the earth. Well, you notice that the way the, the, the places where the Virgin was most worshipped was like Greece and Italy and what have you. And then, you know, Mexico, these warm places were the crops. You get further north, and that's where the Reformation Spain. took place, and they didn't like all day. They yeah. still believed in the Virgin, but they didn't like all the milk and all the, you know, hoo-ha mm -hmm. and everything. It's not so unusual. What were you thinking of? You know? Well, I was, I was thinking of the commonality between the pagan... You can trace it straight yeah, through. straight through. Because that was yeah. important. If the crops don't come in, that's what that old peasant woman told in this century mm -hmm. told that mm -hmm. uh, that that Christian scholar that visited Greece. You know, he was obviously in an outlying area. You wouldn't hear that in the cities. Mm -hmm. But Hopefully. they they well yeah, but they still kept a lot of those pagan customs out in the outlying things, and the the priests kind of looked the other way. You know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, that if if uh, if the thing didn't work right, you know, they wouldn't have any corn if Christ didn't rise. It was a real thing of anxiety still to some of the people that were really unlettered peasants. That alone will tell you. I imagine you find the same thing in Italy and in Mexico, and it's all connected. It's all connected to really to the crops rising. You know, I don't exactly get the whole Mary fertility thing. She only had one kid or two. Or well, we that's the thing. That's, that it's interesting, seem... though. Oddly enough, you know, Diana, I was, that's why I was trying to make that comparison. Diana was a, was helped in the Greek goddess, helped in, in Roman. She, but I, okay, so I should really call her um, Artemis. But she was like this real heavy duty chaste virgin. And she was Apollo's twin. <laughs> And she was always on the hunt with the bow and arrow. And um, somebody that saw her naked, you know, he was spying on her. She had her, like, dogs or stags tear, tear him apart. So it was, like, really serious that if you, like, bothered her virginity even at, at length. But she was, the, she was the goddess that helped women in childbirth. I guess I don't get that. And this is the same thing that they did with the How virgin. How do we have these? At least the virgin had a child, I mean, right. you know. But like, and why is Diana? Fertility. Yeah, why is mm -hmm. Diana the fertility goddess? Mm -hmm. Why is she the goddess of childbirth? I mean, you would think it would be well, some goddess with like a billion children in her feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good no, point. no way. 
and boy, married. It's and almost like, but so it's, I, it's it's very interesting. I've never seen a good explanation. Hmm. It's almost ironic, but I mean, they they prayed to to you know Artemis for a mm -hmm. good childbirth, or if the woman was having and, trouble. And not every woman actually could get pregnant, and they must have needed a they reason. They were the lucky ones. Yeah, <laughs> they, but they back need, then they wouldn't have considered themselves so. Easy. But they maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, off yeah quietly. And... Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I feel so bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a follow-up, follow-up thought to what I was saying just <laughs> now was. Uh, Norm wants to finish. Oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Was in the middle uh -huh. of something, but uh, oh, I'm sorry. Please finish. Is that um, they must have needed a reason to explain why some women got pregnant and other women married did not get pregnant. That there, that there had to be some metaphysical or you know mm, reason okay, why agree. this woman yeah. got pregnant and this yeah. woman did not. Uh, See? Yeah. And there was tension probably around and anxiety around. You didn't pray will, enough. You didn't. My you wife good with this uh, guy. A little bit. Or, I yeah. mean, they had yeah. to come up with something. With something to explain this. Yeah, that makes sense. I, think that's I can buy into that theory. But why would you? T why would you take these chaste women? As well, that I don't know. That's fascinating to me. It's almost maybe that they were trying to separate this act of childbirth from the dirty stuff, intercourse and things. Well, I guess. That just occurred to me. I mean, maybe that was mm -hmm. it. Elevated. Well, elevated. Elevated somehow. Elevated. This is just a thought right now that I just had. I Because I've never been able to figure it out. So I'm just thinking about that. Why wouldn't you try to elevate it? What were you going to say, Jim? Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> There's a conflict here. We're now living in a society that is so removed from the soil, directly removed yeah. from the soil, so removed from the trees, so removed from the orchards, so removed from the cows and the pigs. Why, the closest you get to a pig is a sliced up piece of meat in the, in the <laughs> counter. It's why then are we still worshiping that old myth? Well, it's kind of now, it's diminishing kind of. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost political now with the mm -hmm. you know the fundamentalists, the religious. Yeah, that the anxieties right. are completely different. Yeah, our fears yeah. are different. Yeah. yeah, but it is diminishing, diminishing as. Yes, yeah, slowly, said. slowly, but mm -hmm. that strong you know faith is is really I don't think there anymore. It's it's going it's dying out in Scandinavia. There's maybe fifteen percent. Yeah. Religious. It's really? dying out in a lot of parts well, of Europe. Yeah, the white, one of those countries. Yeah. The European population, not the Muslims. But the, I totally want to move to one of those countries. Wouldn't it be great to live in one of those okay, countries? Yeah, that that's true. It would be so cool. All right. so, so, ladies and gentlemen, where okay. are the new myths? Well, I'll tell you one, because uh, uh, Reese mentioned Heaven's Gate was the cult in California. That's what it was, Heaven's Gate. And so in the early 90s, I believe, is when they committed suicide thinking yeah. that they were going to be picked up by the UFO <laughs> right. that was hiding behind the comet. Woof. Haley's yeah. Comet, the Haley Bot. Yeah. 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 That it was wow. hiding behind, yeah, and was unless it. they ki right. killed themselves, the UFO wouldn't come to get them. So That's the guy, that was it. the leader, who I don't remember his name, uh, he died with with his followers. So I yeah. guess he was committed. Yeah, he believed <laughs> He that. was married to a woman... I think she died previously, but 15 years, maybe, yeah, about 15 years earlier, 1976, when I was living in California, um, there was this flyer, and it was really, literally, just a flyer that I saw in the library of the uh, the people who were interested in um, in being picked up by a UFO. You could come to their seminar oh if you're God. if you're interested in being picked wow. up by the UFO. Come to their seminar, and hear oh, their right. talk, and it was this guy and his wife who were going to talk and explain uh -huh. to you how you could sign up to, to join the UFO that oh was going to was going to come in a few years to pick you up you believe this and stuff? all the arrangements that you had to make before that. Yeah. And I really wanted to go. Oh, no, I was no, very no, was I was, yeah, I was just 15. to see what they were. Oh, you wanted to go for real? I wanted to go to the lecture. Mm -hmm. wanted to learn about it. He this. wanted to learn I was about it. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, was I thought you meant you wanted to go to mock it and silently yeah. in the back of the Well, today, room. yeah, I went to mock it and sneer and snicker okay. and smirk. I missed the 14 part. Yeah, initially. so I, I did believe in silly metaphysical things at 14. So, uh, yeah, I really wanted to go, and yeah, that's so what it's stuck it's in my head when 15 years later I heard about these people killing themselves, and sure oh, enough, it was the same guy who was speaking. He must have said, oh my gosh, wow. you know, these are the guys I was going to go and visit. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, gonna... now I want to I know if you'd have been that gullible or if you'd have been like halfway through going, what? 
Hopefully, yeah. No, I, mean, no, I, no, I, I went to a lecture on Transcendental Meditation, you know, and, uh, you know, I realized after the lecture that that was bullshit, but no, I was interested in astrology, numerology, fire. I went to a lot of lectures. All of those yeah. weird California fads. Even, you know. what, 30 mm -hmm. years ago, uh, we were just I, talking I about that at, at lunch, that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't realize yeah, how so. strongly the Jungians were into spirituality, duh. Yeah. And, you know, I was interested because they were interested in the gods and goddesses in antiquity. And, you know, we went there for a while. And then we realized, I read, you know, Jung's, you know, autobiography. And it's like, and then I talked to some people that were in this literary um, large community. And I found out that everybody knew that, you know. <laughs> so I guess that somehow or other, past Jim and I, we had to, like, actually, you know, go there. And then realize it, you know, and that was like exit stage right. Yeah, what a woo woo it was. I was quite shocked. <sighs> so, you know, so actually, I mean, it is interesting to explore, you know, different things. Go back to his point. What's mm -hmm. the next? What's the next? Myths. Oof, boy, that is frightening. Well, I think Scientology is a good example of one of them. It's a modern myth. Yeah, yeah it's how fast, but it hasn't you know. been spreading as much as it as it did. Well, that's because Tom Cruise jumped on the couch. Yeah, it's probably it. Everybody said, "Oh, this is this guy." Well, that crazy. and if you start, there's, I mean, the secrets are starting to get out. And yeah, there's enough out there with the mm -hmm. internet and stuff. Yeah, that if actually, you're trying to, mm -hmm. if you go on people. there and you learn about this thing that sounds so great, and you <laughs> Google it, you're gonna get some of the crazy Craziest, with it. Yeah. And if you have half a brain, you'll be like, mm, mm -hmm. "Okay, never mind." Yeah, I mean that's. I don't know. I but don't yeah. know. I mean, you know, actually, the Muslim religion is spreading fast. Craziness. I know. I know. That is scary. And um, what else is spreading? Mormonism. The Mormons are spreading. Right. Well. The, For a while, the, the Jehovah's Mormons. were spreading in Greece and Italy, yeah. which I found very strange. But I, now it's kind of like. I think the dumb. Mormons are exaggerating and exaggerating. I think they're making they up their they're figures. They're not spreading as fast as, as they want you to think. They would like. I hope not, Norm. No, they're not. And they may have been. Uh, at one time, but they're actually in decline. So who is on the... On, on? I, I would know. I mean, it scares me how many veiled women I see driving in cars when I'm on the highways. I see a lot of women... Covered. Fully veiled? Just about, I mean... Yeah, you know, but we're the repository for so much of the Middle Eastern cultures here in Detroit. Yeah, I don't know if it's I, spreading so much as Yeah, it's that's the point. It's, yeah. no, those are, the same those are, At the mall, I've seen a lot of women with spreading. the head scarves Immigrants. and stuff. I hope those Jim are and immigrants. I are seeing that's a lot of women at the various yeah. malls well, that's with what the I'm head scarves. Yeah. But they're not veiled, most of them. There's been well, a, we've seen uh, a few of them. No, I think that's very different if you look at it. The head scarves and the veiled are very different. Yeah. And you notice a lot of the women, I noticed that when I was at Wayne with the headscarf, they were also like, they have painted toenails right. and they're wearing skin spiked tight heels, pants, skin tight, and the oh, yeah. long artificial oh, yeah. nails, yet they have you know, the, the, the makeup, the phony eyelashes, they are sexier than a lot right. of the other yeah. women in the mall. I mean, it's like... Yeah. And those scarves aren't exactly modest. They're no, like, they aren't. They're yeah, very pretty. Right. Like, so very beautiful. Yeah. No, I don't yeah. think that's the same as... Mm -hmm. But yeah, my, my son tells me I'm ex overly prejudiced that the scarves are very beautiful and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, oh, come yeah, on, give me a break, right. you know. <laughs> How can you be so prejudiced, Mom? You know, it's a lot of it's decorative. Uh, and he's no, probably no. right, well, though. Wait, I mean, a lot of it probably is. I mean, I don't think they're supposed, your hand I don't think they're really supposed to wear all that <clears throat> makeup and stuff. I think they're obeying the letter of the law. No, I think the what spirit. you probably have in that sense is either converts or second generation. Yeah, that's quite possible. Uh, because they're not going to just yeah. give up all of their mm -hmm. fancy, yeah. you know. More than likely converts. second generation. Or yeah. second generation where they're like, okay, yeah, mom makes me, yeah. you know, this is what we do, but I'm all about this American. Yeah, we're crap. out. Yeah. We're out of the shop. It's amazing how yeah. seductive they look. And I mean, if Muhammad put all those things, didn't they early on put those things in so that women would be modest and, and not tempting? I mean, you know. And here they are, you know, like, and I'm going like, oh boy, they are seductive, yeah. you know. They're following the letter of the law, but the, not the, not the spirit. Sentence. 
the so that's that's corrupting. That, but that's a good sign. That's, that's a sign. Yes. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, <coughs> yeah it probably is a good oh, sign. Oh, most so. the best thing for that whole thing is the corruption of our horrible Western ways. Boy, yeah. we have that everybody it. loves. They all go to Bahrain to you know be naughty. <laughs> to be naughty, right? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. that's what our son said because he was stationed there and he said it was like incredible. Oh, it's in the city. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's all these people coming and all they do is. He said all weekend all the rich guys they're yep. piling over the border you know and for their prostitution yep. for oh, yeah prostitution, the prostitution drinking, liquor everything the whole you know, basically thing. everything we hold dear here in the United yeah. States yeah <laughs> yeah all the things we love here. Oh, right. yeah he said the hypocrisy is saying and then like you know like by Monday morning everybody was back you know, gone, you know, and all holy probably back in... And all the women he are not hypocrisy. from those countries. All the women are Western transplants or Ty Taiwan. Yeah. Any of these places that aren't Muslim, yeah. they're not Muslim women that are in Bahrain it, because that would defile... Because we're all hideous, or not hideous, we're all defiled Dirtyals anyway, so it doesn't yeah. really Prostitutes. Yeah, yeah, they can treat it. We're, I'm as close as a prostitute as, yeah. as that girl that is a prostitute yeah. in their yeah. eyes. So yeah. They, they yeah they yeah there's things in there uh, you'll see when my lecture oh, when I get to them if you you know if you're wearing perfume and you walk by a group of men I mean you know that that's prostitution as far as they're yeah, concerned they're that's crazy. It. Poop. Yeah, but that's okay because we're into this. yeah that's fine I'm gonna wear all the perfume I want fellas so. <laughs> All right, I hate to do this, but I have to be up at five. Well, oh, we thank yeah. you very, very much for your talk. Thank you. Yeah. It was I was I really enjoyed this one. My heart and soul yeah. is in. I enjoy all of them. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you guys. It was a wonderful discussion. Yeah. And thank you for your patience during this lecture. It was so long. Yeah.